phrase that comes to mind as we come today to the end of chapter 12 before moving tomorrow into chapter 13, the very last and final chapter in the book of Nehemiah, is a little phrase, only the best is good enough. Only the best is good enough for God. I'm going to read the closing verses of Nehemiah chapter 12, beginning at verse 44. On that day, men were appointed over the storerooms, the contributions, the first fruits, and the tithes, to gather into them the portions required by the law for the priests and for the Levites, according to the fields of the towns. For Judah rejoiced over the priests and the Levites who ministered. And they performed the service of their God and the service of purification, as did the singers and the gatekeepers, according to the command of David and his son Solomon. For long ago, in the days of David and Asaph, there were directors of the singers, and there were songs of praise and thanksgiving to God. And all Israel, in the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah, gave the daily portions for the singers and the gatekeepers, and they set apart that which was for the Levites, and the Levites set apart that which was for the sons of Aaron. Only the best is good enough. Now, by this, I do not mean perfection. I really want to stress that, because those who are perfectionists can actually sometimes hinder the work of God. They can paralyze others and can stop the gifts of others being used in the church for God's praise and for God's glory. One of the most beautiful times of worship that I remember enjoying was one of our services uh, in one of my churches where once a month the service was entirely conducted and taken, every aspect of it, including the music and the reading and the leading of the service, was taken by a group of, of adults who had learning difficulties. And uh, I remember one evening the presence of God being so real uh, as they led singing that was truthfully completely out of tune. But the presence of God as they gave of their best uh, and they gave of themselves was just so, so beautiful and so, so special. It's our best that God looks for. Not how we insist or even at times thinks, think that things should be done to our like, liking. Uh, it, it's our best. And in our churches, in this particular season, we need to learn to value everyone. It's so important in our world today that we value those whose color of skin is different to ours, that we value those whose physical abilities are different to ours, that we value those whose mental capacity is different to ours, that we value those who are different perhaps because of a syndrome that they had from birth or even from conception. Everyone's gifts need to be valued in the church of Jesus Christ. For the church is a body where we need all the other parts. The church is a family where we need to learn increasingly to love and tenderly care for and look after one another. The church is an army that advances well when it advances together. The church is the people of God. And we cannot get away from the clear word here in these verses that we need to be a generous church. Generous in our attitudes, generous in our lifestyle, generous in how we contribute to the work of God. Jesus told a, a lovely story that illustrated this very, very important truth that we find here in chapter 12 of Nehemiah. I'm going to read the story, Mark 12, verses 41 to 44. 
and he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small coins, which makes a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. May God truly write his word and the truth of these verses upon our individual hearts and lives. And may he really sow it into the DNA of who we are as a church and who we are as a diocese. And I conclude by praying a prayer that I came across very recently. O Lord God, we acknowledge you as our Father, ourselves as your children, our neighbours as our brothers and sisters, and we dedicate to your obedience and to their service our hearts, our minds, our wills, our works. Resolve to stand fast together in the faith. Together we seek the help of thy Holy Spirit. Together we ask that we would do battle for your perfect kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I pray, come Holy Spirit, anoint us afresh to see others as you see them, and Lord, to serve others and to serve our world with the love that you place and birth and grow in us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.